could there be a way to turn your distractibility into productivity? Let's talk about it. For some time now, I've employed this strategy of having a warm-up piece on hand to help ease me into my day's work. The idea being that it's a personal piece that I can just spend an hour on or so before getting into any paid work to help warm me up. It's been a really useful tool for just relaxing me into my day, helping me prepare for, you know, sometimes when you're working on commissions, maybe feeling a little bit unready that day. The minis that I paint this way, they don't tend to come out as maybe the very best minis I could possibly do, but they do enable me to kind of experiment, practice, get my hand back in, refresh myself on certain things, and doing that outside of the format of paid commission work is really, really useful. So when my friends at Lazy Dragon Gaming sent me two entire copies of Terminator Chaplin Tarantus and Here's My Scraggly Morning Hair and Morning Face Struggling to Comprehend Kindness, Along with the instructions, ones for you and ones to give away, I knew this would be an opportunity to have a cool warm-up piece on hand, whilst at the same time hopefully hooking someone up with something that they'd really enjoy. Okay, so first of all, if you're not a fan of spoilers, look away now, because I want to show the completed piece up front to give you an idea of what we're talking about, you know, before we get into all of the nitty-gritty. Now I've got to be honest, I'm pretty proud of this miniature. When I was first kind of considering it as a warm-up piece, I thought to myself, you know, perhaps because I'd be using it mostly to practice things for commissions on various different days, there'd be a lot of different clashing styles and techniques and what came together at the end might not be super great. But actually it kind of just pulled together on its own and I really like what we ended up with. So instead of a tutorial, I want to take you on a painting journey, a diary of sorts. I want to explain what I did, why I did it, and when I did it, and how it came together into this finished miniature. Don't forget to stick around until the end though, where we'll have some details for you on how you can win your very own Chaplin Tarantus. Day one is perhaps the most boring way that we could start this video. It's just me getting the miniature into sub-assemblies, which I then sprayed black. Uh, I guess one interesting thing worth noting here, you'll see that there's a little blob of blue tack on the miniature. That's to protect it from spray in the area where the glue join is, which means that I can still use plastic glue to glue it together and get a good secure join. It's not always possible to do this, but it is a cool little thing that I sometimes do that, you know, some people may overlook. It was probably another three or four days from assembling and priming till I actually got to start proper work on the miniature. But I did have some uh, gradient spraying that I needed to do with the airbrush. And so I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to warm up. So on the back of the cape there, I just put in a nice little, very subtle gradient from a kind of deep red to a bright red and used this as an opportunity just to, you know, kind of gauge my airbrush for the day, get my hand in on that. Now the inside of the cape was actually a bit of a different story. I just happened to have a bunch of browns on my palette. I think I had quite a bit of Rhinox hide, Zandri dust, uh, maybe some iron rack skin as well, which is obviously more a creamy color. And I was just kind of using paint that was present. I figured, you know, may as well get it on there while I've got these colors on my palette because I knew that I wanted the inside of the cloak to be kind of creamy browny sort of colors. The little bits of scratching and texturing that you see there as well, that was something where I actually came in later in the day, along with the freehand. I had some more sort of finer line work that I needed to do on a piece, and I thought, oh, I'll just grab that Tarantus again and, you know, just practice a few strokes, a bit of scratching, a bit of fine line work, just to, you know, again, kind of steady my hand into it. Day three was when I decided to use Tarantus as a guinea pig for a new NMM recipe, uh, NMM gold recipe that I'd been kind of cooking up in my head. Traditionally, I've always used Reaper paints for doing my non-metallic metals, but I kind of remember musing at one point on how much I liked the relationship between Avalon Sunset and Mournfang Brown and how much warmth Mournfang brought to Avalon, and realized that this was very adjacent to the kind of thing that you're going for with non-metallic gold. So I sort of cooked up this recipe in my head. With the addition of XV88 as a sort of transitional mid-tone between Mournfang and Avaland, and then the addition of a sort of creamy, off-whitey kind of colour at the top end. Do you know, I don't even remember exactly which one it was that I used, but it doesn't really matter. But I was able to get a range of colours for a gold NMM that I thought would work really, really well, and so I decided to just get in there and start work on one of the shoulder pads and the top of the Crozius. 
And the next few sessions ended up being just lots of work on this gold NMM, to be honest. It's quite a drawn out process painting gold NMM. There's not really a super quick way to do it. But that kind of played into my hands because it meant I could just kind of pick it up each day, do a little hour, and I was using four straight out of the pot colors. There wasn't a lot of mixing going on. A bit of glazing back and forth here and there, but not really much in the way of actual mixing. So it was easy to keep it consistent and just pick it up and put it down as was convenient. One place I really messed up though was in splitting the shoulder pads to two separate days of my painting process. I don't have the best brain for copying by eye, so having to kind of mirror and reverse one shoulder pad to get it to look consistent with the other shoulder pad was a real challenge for me, and at one point I actually had to paint out a couple of sections of the shoulder pad and redo them, because, you know, whilst it's a warm-up piece, like, I still wanted it to look good. The next few days were spent just chipping away at little jobs, so I would just pick it up and hammer out some silver NMM or some parchment, or there's a little bit of non-metallic copper on the nozzle of the flamer, for example. Just these sort of small, insignificant jobs. There was also an evening during this point where I was sat working on some other things at my desk and I decided to actually go out of my way and do the base for the miniature. I don't know why, but I didn't take any photos of me working on the base. Maybe just because it was kind of outside of working hours and my head wasn't in work mode or something. But it was, you know, maybe an hour and a half of just sitting and working in some basic NMMs and some rust textures and some mud and all kind of basic generic kind of basey things. But that was a, it was a pretty cool and fun evening actually. It's a real shame I didn't manage to get any photographs of that. Day eight in this process was actually quite recent. I'd taken a break from this for maybe a week and a half or possibly even two weeks by this point. And I was working on some Blood Bowl Undead that appeared very recently on the channel in a video. I had some blacks to do on those miniatures, which I was just working up with a simple uh, Reaper Heather Blue mixed with black kind of workup. It was very, very straightforward. But it was exactly the same workup I wanted for the black armor on this because it would contrast nicely with things like the silver NMM. So while I was doing it on the undead, I figured I may as well start my day warming up by doing it on the chaplain, and so that was exactly what I did. Because it was a warm-up and it was kind of, you know, some fine highlighting here and there, it did lead to the odd chunky line and stuff like that, but it's not the end of the world. In fact, it's much better to do that on the warm-up piece than on the commission, which is the whole reason you're doing the warm-up piece in the first place. Day 9 was another interesting one because I kind of went out of my way to work on the chaplain. I was really enjoying it by this point, having picked it back up after a bit of a break, and I knew that I was really close to being finished. There was only one kind of major workup left to do, which was the, um, the sort of cold whites that you see in the crozius and the helmet, and then it was really just a couple of little bitty bobby bits here and there. So I decided to actually just start my day just painting these warm whites, not because they were specific warming up for a certain thing I was going to do that day, but just because I kind of wanted to get them done. And it was a really good, fun little warm-up, actually. It was a nice way to just settle into the day. It's a workup that I've had in my repertoire for a very long time, um, and it's a workup I'm really comfortable with, really happy with. It's just a Viejo model color azure, and you just keep adding white to it and building it up slowly and slowly and slowly. It takes a little while, but it gives a nice sort of smooth and interesting, very cold toned white. Um, it is quite a dark white, so I think if it's not sitting next to black, it's maybe not the best choice. It wants to be sitting amongst really dark colours to, to read as white. But in this case, there were a bunch of dark colours on the miniature, so it was a perfect opportunity to whip it out. I actually then found I was enjoying myself so much during this session that I just whipped around and finished everything else off. There was uh, a bit of tidying up I wanted to do in the silver NMM, there was a little bit of tidying up in a couple of the highlights I wanted to do, and then just the sort of Terminata stone bits on the shoulder pad insignias. So yeah, pretty straightforward. We were, we were done by this point. So in the end I probably invested... 14 hours broken down over about 10 sessions including the base and the intention was to just sort of do an hour each time but there were a couple of times where I just got a bit too into it and just wanted to carry on which is why I ended up you know maybe pumping an extra four hours total here and there just on sort of overtime bits. 
However, having this warm-up piece at the side of my desk for the last few weeks has been really, really lovely. It's been so nice to have something that I can just use to kind of grease the gears before I get going on commissions. And watching it really slowly develop, you know, knowing that I'm only going to be putting little bits of time into it here and there, has actually been really fun and really rewarding. I honestly can't recommend enough just picking a model and having it on the sideline and just using it as something to kind of get ready before your painting session. This doesn't have to be something that's exclusive to commission painters. It can just be a really fun way to slowly chip away at something a bit more interesting while you're maybe like batching out a big bulk of your army, for example. A little hour here and there warming up before you spend two or three hours doing something else. And honestly, at the end of all that, I'm actually pretty amazed at how good the quality of the finished miniature is. I actually really surprised myself by how decent a finished product I got, considering that the intention was to just practice every day on this. So to show that off a little bit better, we're going to do some of that crispy 360 footage. Here's a bit of that. Okay, so here's the bit that you've been waiting for. You've watched through an entire video of me waffling on and showing you photographs to get to it. The giveaway. So thanks to the amazing generosity of Lazy Dragon Gaming, who not only have sponsored this video with the two copies of the miniature, but also sponsor the channel itself, I'm able to do something that's uh, a bit fun and a bit of a different take on a giveaway, and I hope that you'll appreciate where this is coming from. In the description of this video, you're going to find a Gleam link. That Gleam link is going to show you all the different ways that you can enter the giveaway. So it's nice and simple. We're going to run it until the end of February, so there's plenty of time to get your entries in. So just take a look at that whenever it's convenient, follow the steps that are outlined on the Gleam giveaway, and you'll be golden. Now the cool part comes from how we're actually framing this giveaway. I did say I wanted to do something a little bit different. So, this is what I'm thinking. The journey of painting this miniature has been quite personal to me. It represents sort of snapshots of my daily life in my work and there are little things that I can look at on it and I can tie into specific moments where I've been working on things recently. Now I think that's really, really cool, but that is kind of a bit about me and I don't really want this giveaway to be entirely about me. So what I'm going to do is offer you an option. If you win the giveaway, whoever you may be, you can have a choice of either taking this miniature that I've painted, and that can be yours and I will send it to you, or you can have a brand new crispy wrapper fresh copy of grey plastic to take on your own journey and experience kind of more of the, the fun and the interest that I got from this instead of the end product. It will be totally your choice and both choices are equally valid, pick whichever one you prefer. But I just thought it would be fun to maybe give people the choice of how they win a giveaway, not just, you know, entering for the sake of winning. I do also want to take one final opportunity just to thank Lazy Dragon Gaming for their support. A whole bunch of what you see on the channel is made much easier behind the scenes thanks to their kindness and support and I really wouldn't be able to do some of the stuff that I'm doing without those lovely folks. So do please make sure that you are following them on social media and stuff like that. When you enter the giveaway those are going to be some of the things to get entries so uh, I'm hoping that you will be after watching this video either way. Of course, if you liked this video, you can give it a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it, and you can subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing here on YouTube. If you really love the content and want to support its creation, there is also a Patreon campaign. That starts from as little as $1 a month, so it's pretty cheap to get into, and there's some really cool benefits, including the amazing Wholesome Degenerates Discord server, which I am so proud of. So thank you so much everyone for watching, I hope you enjoy taking part in this giveaway, I hope you found the journey interesting, I'm going to get out of here for now and roll the end credits, but I will see you in the next one, bye everyone.